In this video, you will learn about why masking is helpful when cleaning interferometric images, and what best practices for masking are. As we learned in our video introducing clean, making science images from interferometric data requires deconvolving the point spread function of the array from the initial dirty image. A commonly used algorithm for doing this is called clean. This algorithm iteratively builds a model of the true sky brightness distribution by assigning clean components to the brightest emission, subtracting each component convolved by the point spread function from the image, and repeating that process. When constructing a clean model, you want to be careful to generate only clean components that correspond to real astronomical emission, and not to image artifacts or noise peaks. In particular, by assigning components to these noise peaks, you will artificially lower the apparent noise in your final image. This is called the clean bias. Creating a clean mask allows you to restrict the area in the image where clean components will be fit, and thus to distinguish real astronomical emission from artifacts and noise. The convolution of the point spread function with the model clean components, however, will still be subtracted from the entire image, regardless of what regions are masked. In general, the best practice for clean masking is to create a relatively generous mask that includes the emission region, with the buffers several beams wide between the edge of the mask and the emission region. Here we show a dirty image of emission from NGC 6334i, part of the cat's paw nebula, with a well-chosen mask. After each major cycle, or inverse Fourier transform of the visibility data to make an image, you will most likely need to modify the mask to include fainter emission that becomes easier to see after brighter sources have been removed from the residual image. Here we show the evolution of the mask over the first few major cycles of clean for NGC 6334i. Notice the buffer region around the emission, which allows clean the flexibility it needs in building up the model. Let's look at that one more time. The mask changes significantly during the first few major cycles as the brightest emission is removed from the residual map, revealing more of the source. This rapid mask evolution during the first few major cycles is often seen when cleaning images, especially those with extended emission or multiple sources, or both. If we choose an initial mask for NGC 6334i that is too tight, we can see that in subsequent major cycles we do not model the extended emission very well, causing these crater-like features to appear in our subsequent residual images. Conversely, if we choose a mask that is too loose, for example the entire image, then we end up including imaging artifacts in our models. Here, emission from a side lobe of the main emission region in the nebula ends up in our clean model, since we haven't excluded this region from our clean mask. In this case, this extra model information moves flux from our source into the side lobes, and would be especially problematic if we were generating a model to self-calibrate our data. Mask creation can be tedious to do by hand, especially for spectral data cubes where each channel could need its own mask. For example, consider these spectral line observations from the H2 region, RCW120. The morphology of the emission changes significantly from channel to channel over many hundreds of channels. To make masking cubes like this feasible, algorithms have been developed to automate this procedure. Starting in ALMA cycle 5, the ALMA imaging pipeline uses the auto multithresh algorithm in CASA to automatically mask emission while cleaning. This algorithm uses computer vision techniques to generate masks similar to what an experienced data reducer would do by hand. Check the comments below for links to more information if you'd like to look into using Auto Multithresh. We've just looked at masking while cleaning. It all boils down to this. Masking too tightly doesn't allow clean the flexibility to model emission in your image well. Masks that are too large might include noise peaks or side lobes in your sky model. To avoid this, just mask with a buffer a few beam widths wide around emission in your image, 
and remember that auto-masking algorithms like auto multi thresh exist to help you with complicated or tedious masking. Remember as well that you can change the mask after every major cycle. Thanks for watching, and happy cleaning! Be sure to check out some of our other videos. A couple are linked on screen now.